Hello, hello everybody, it's your boy Prof Chaff, and we're back again with a new video. This is when a CIA hacker goes rogue. Let's check this out. It was on the Discord suggestions. I check out videos from there, so you know, if you're interested. 2017. It's the day before the Super Bowl. Beyonce down. We're going way back. Twins. Bad and bougie hits number one on the Billboard. Bad and bougie. The whistleblowing shape of you, Ed Sheeran. Begins sending a series of way cryptic back. tweets. Okay. What is Vault Seven? This Vault? initial question is paired with a photograph of the global seed the vault that? in Norway, an area that has been the target of many conspiracy theories, leaving viewers wondering what the connection Secret NATO eugenics program. Okay, bro. Is. The next day, another question is asked <laughs> along with another photo. This what time, the Nazi vault oh. used to store gold during the 1940s. This continues for four more days. Each tweet posing another question along with another photo. An engine test at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, fake newspaper covers of famous whistleblowers, a stock image of a welder, and lastly, a photo of a woman mailing a letter, reportedly taken by East Germany secret police during their surveillance operations. Damn. After February 9th, the tweet stopped. Online posters begin trying to decipher the meaning behind these seemingly unconnected photos and that initial question. Most believed it would be a continuation of the Hillary Clinton email releases, which WikiLeaks was known for. Some think it could be connected to World Trade Center Building 7, and a few even suggest that the tweets could be the work of the cryptographic puzzle organization. Hey, I remember this. We watched a video about this. Would Mental be illness? <laughs> almost a month later, but WikiLeaks would mention Vault 7 again, this time with huh? no warning. Vault 7. Year Zero, a torrent link to a set of encrypted files accessible Bro, only with. If I saw that online, and it had a torrent link, I am not touching that. Listen, this is a good way to get your PC bricked. Password. Don't touch that. that. password, a John F. Kennedy quote released the following morning. Enter into a wait, wait, what was that? Word. That password. Enter into a thousand pieces and scatter into the winds. A John F. Kennedy quote released the following morning unveiled 8,761 okay. files on hacking and surveillance Damn. techniques developed and used by the CIA, making this the oh. largest leak of classified intelligence documents Damn. History. Criminal investigation is Somebody got clapped for that CIA. real bad. Some 8,000 documents uh, that details the CIA's technical capability to carry out hacking. We'd like to thank the CIA for their gift. Hey, the this guy's a, oh, this guy's an MMA fighter. Uh, Mayhem, his nickname was Mayhem. Make Mayhem Miller, I think he was. I've seen this guy fight. He's not that great. WikiLeaks race. founder Julian Assange criticized the CIA for keeping the data in one place, calling it incompetent. Wait, is that what they did? Brother, come on. Even I don't know how to do that. Job. Absolutely. This has to be an inside job. You can surveil someone through their phones, through their television sets, and microwaves that turn into cameras, etc. Huh? Well, microwaves turn into cameras? This is because of what's happening. Why would this content affect your clearance status? Clearance, bro, clearance status. I think I have a clearance status? I can barely go to the bathroom. Come on, homie. Clearance status. <laughs> your name, your phone number, oh. your home address, your email address, Sheesh. social media accounts, family members, and court records. All these personal private details are scattered across the internet, private. accessible to anybody curious enough to look. This information is being Probably. traded right now by entities known as data brokers. They're not some shadowy figures from a spot. Uh, They're it's, legitimate businesses. Making it's stalker shadow of Chernobyl, I think. A profit off your private lives, creating detailed profiles on us without our consent. But that's where today's sponsor, Delete Me. Oh, we have a sponsor. Delete Me is here to do the Somewhere in the suburbs of Northern Virginia, there's mm -hmm. an office building that looks like any Watch other office, out now. except this one has fences fit for a prison and guards who are equipped for a full-scale firefight. Just the CIA in, requires a security check and a key card because this building houses the cyber intelligence division of the CIA. Wait, that that is not the official logo. No, why is it cute? It's not. You guys are scary. You're not supposed to be cute, motherfuckers. Don't. On the ninth floor, the can... other door that requires badge access the lies the operation support branch for this cyber intelligence division. The OSB is considered the CIA's hacker unit and hacker only employs unit. around a dozen people. It is in this office, on this private network, not connected to the internet, that the Vault 7 tools were developed and maintained, meaning that this leak 
came from this room. 20 minutes after WikiLeaks... Well, if there's only so many people, then it must be pretty easy for them to figure out who leaked it. ...tweets the password to those encrypted files. It announces that the planned press conference from WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been put on hold since his video streams are being hit offline. Within hours, news outlets such as The Guardian, Wired, and The New York Times begin reporting on the, the release. Guardian. And researchers around the globe begin diving into the extensive documentation. But we still haven't answered that initial question. What exactly is Vault 7? The series of releases, published from March to November, alleged that the U.S. consulate in Frankfurt, Germany, is a mm -hmm. covert CIA hacking base used Ooh. to attack targets in Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Revealed that the I CIA mean, has a... We're not surprised that it's a thing, right? They have... America has bases all over Europe, so... ...practice of stealing malware from foreign states such as Russia and using these in attacks to leave behind the digital fingerprint of the groups the attack techniques are stolen from, essentially mm. framing others for their operations, and detailed how the CIA hoarded zero-day vulnerabilities. Pretty smart. The agency not only... ...undiscovered flaws in software that can be exploited before they are detected and fixed. ...stockpiled these, but also purchased them from private entities without disclosing the vulnerabilities to the software manufacturer. Ooh. Now, none of this is particularly surprising yeah. or unique. It's a fair assumption that every nation state with a robust intelligence network probably engages in similar activities. Countries yep. like Russia, China, Israel, and North Korea have well-documented histories of cyber espionage and cyber warfare. The real the highlight government. of the release were the tools developed by the CIA from 2008 to 2016 for conducting these attacks. Some of these tools include Hive, Scribbles, Fine Dining, Sonic Screwdriver, Night Skies, and Weeping Angel. Still talking about hacking? Hive was a command and control framework used to manage malware implants on compromised systems. Okay. A command and control framework allows an attacker, or in this case the CIA, to essentially communicate and send commands to malware they've implanted on a system. Hive allowed the CIA to do all of this through websites that appeared ordinary. To anybody who came across the connection, it would appear to just be a normal link to maybe a software website, when the underlying traffic would actually be extracting sensitive information from the targeted devices back to the CIA servers. Scribbles, Damn. dubbed the Snowden Stopper, Ribbles. is a tool that embedded web beacon tags into, into confidential documents that were likely to be stolen. Sheesh. The purpose of this is to track access by whistleblowers and foreign spies. It would generate invisible, unique watermarks for Microsoft Office documents, which, when opened, sent information back to the CIA <laughs> about the viewer. Fine Dining, a collection of malware-laced applications that were Still, disguised as legitimate programs. Good. Agents could use these apps, stored on a USB drive, to infect the target's computer while appearing to just run normal software. The list of decoys... This pretty much tells you that no matter what you do, how well prepared you are, probably somebody's probably yoinking your shit. ...apps include VLC, if you're on the Chrome, internet. Opera, and Firefox, VLC? LibreOffice, Prezi, Skype, 7-Zip, the game 24 Damn. game, and even some antivirus software. Kaspersky. Sonic Screwdriver hey, I mean, is a tool that... Kaspersky is one of the most famous Russian, you know, not malware, but like yoinkers, I guess. The firmware it's a Russian Thunderbolt to antivirus, adapters, supposedly. ...making them store and execute malicious code during a max boot process. This means it would bypass security mechanisms like firmware passwords, taking control of the system before the operating system even loads. And because the attacks target the low-level firmware of the computer, the malicious code would persist even after the operating system is completely reinstalled. Continuing with the Apple attacks, Oof. the night skies Wait. works like a... How do you remove it then? Huh? ...basic command and control system. Throw the PC in the trash? uniquely embed itself into the iTunes application. This allows the CIA to monitor and control iTunes? not just the Mac, but also any iPhone that's synced with it. And oh. most famously, Weeping Angel. Weeping Angel was a software suite developed Samsung in TVs partnership to become listening with devices. Mi 5 that would allow Samsung TVs to be turned into listening devices, even when they appeared to be turned off. This fake off mode would allow the TV to secretly record conversations, store and exfiltrate audio without the user's knowledge, effectively turning your TV into a listening device. Okay. Now these tools are just... Okay, that's kind of scary. That, that is kind of fucked up, the last the one. I mean, they're all fucked there up. There are dozens of others, such as Fight Club and Ricky Bobby, that are a little Who's less naming unique. these? Vault 7 release also contains some mostly irrelevant but interesting notes, such as one CIA employee recommending their Mr. colleagues Smith. read Reddit to stay up to date on information, a how-to guide on remaining undercover Reddit. while overseas, an entire page of Japanese emojis, and documents suggesting that the CIA was exploring ways to infect the control systems used of by cars? modern internet-connected vehicles. The purpose I mean, of this... Hey, I'm not surprised with how, how you know, electrical and 
Shit, cars have become like I'm not surprised that's gonna be in the future if Explicit not already happening stated, already. But it would permit the CIA to engage in nearly undetectable assassinations, according to Wikileaks. Undetectable the assassinations. The, the CIA releases a statement saying the American public should be deeply troubled by any disclosure designed to damage the intelligent community's ability to protect America. Insisted that shouldn't you motherfuckers be working on not releasing any more shit like this? Well, they for blaming the public US citizens for your uses comply fully with the US law and the Constitution. Julian Assange finally manages to conduct a live press conference where he vets questions from media outlets. Okay. A few days later, former I'm sure CIA there are Deputy random Director questions. Mike Morrill says the information released by WikiLeaks was on the CIA's top secret network. So this has to be an inside job. President Trump, who had previously benefited from WikiLeaks. Okay, so of currently it's 17, so it's it's Trump. Trump was 17. Hillary Clinton's emails was now I assume it in was an Trump. awkward position. When he was running for office, Trump. he said, They want to distract us from WikiLeaks. It's been amazing what's coming out on oh, WikiLeaks. Oh, it's no longer WikiLeaks. amazing? WikiLeaks, I love WikiLeaks. <laughs> now, he was more... Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. <laughs> I know nothing really about them. It's not my... It's not my deal in life. <laughs> in fact, it was this leak that... Come on, man. Director Yo, that lady is gorgeous. Jesus. And other Trump administration officials to allegedly plan the kidnapping and assassination of Julian Assange. But now that we've answered what Vault 7 is, now comes okay. the question of why. Why did whoever why have Vault access 7? to these files feel the need to give them to WikiLeaks or more importantly feel the need to make this information public? When news outlets began picking up the release, little by little this misconception emerged that the tool Weeping Angel was used to spy on millions of Americans. This still persists even today, but it's not true. And the reason for that is simple. Well, the vast majority of- It's not true. Tools I mean, leaked in can we know that it's not true? In a way that sure. requires physical access to the target devices at least once. They reflect the needs of CIA agents in the field, working ah. with target devices directly, looking to gather specific information. The only real way this could be used to spy on the masses would be to infect the Samsung devices at the place they're manufactured or sometime before they arrive at the store you buy one at. Well, this is I mean, that doesn't sound like it'd be very hard. And it's believed that this is the way they infected the iPhones of specific targets. Doing hmm. this on a massive scale is unlikely I mean, and mostly listen, on a mass scale it'd probably be useless most of the motherfuckers nowadays be letting everything out in 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 the internet already like you're already saying everything you do brother who needs to know we don't need you're already saying too much don't understand just shut the fuck up capable right? of. unlike the snowden leaks these tools no, weren't then, used to I don't know anything about that, by the way. Everyday citizens. So outside of kind understanding of fans, but... what's possible by people looking to target you there's no real tangible benefit American citizens get from having this information public on September 11th True just hours after the towers went down. Mm -hmm. A senator from Utah told reporters that the CIA had intercepted a phone call between Bin Laden Associates discussing the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. While American citizens might have been glad to hear that, that upset Why didn't the White they stop House them? because it tipped off the terrorists that the US government had been spying on them and the methods they used to do so, which in turn burnt that method. Whoever leaked Vault ah. 7 intentionally hindered national security efforts and did Let's so what they knowing mean. that it could potentially stop operations that were aimed at protecting the public. And they did that with very that little actual nice. benefit. So why do it? What was the real motive? Okay. We're jumping forward to March 13th. Six days after WikiLeaks publishes Vault 7, federal agents raid the apartment of Bloomberg software engineer Bloomberg. Joshua Schultz. In his apartment, they find a treasure trove of electronic devices and digital media. But here's the thing. The FBI doesn't want to tip off Schult, who's currently at work, that he's under surveillance as oh, their shit. prime suspect. So instead of confiscating or copying anything off his devices, they simply take photos right. of his apartment. Hey, come on, listen. Nobody... I imagine that the person that did these leaks would know that they would find them. No way you do something like this and you assume that you're just gonna get out scot-free. Nah, that's like a... That's like a... You do this and then you write the suicide note, okay? And leave. <laughs> Two days later, at 120 Park Avenue in Manhattan, Schult clocks out of work and starts making his way back home. But as soon as he leaves the building, he's greeted by two FBI Hello. agents that introduce themselves and invite him to chat. Schult is well aware of the ongoing investigation and I agrees imagine. to cooperate. So they head to a cafe not far from the building. Oh. Little does he know, as he sits down to talk about the Vault 7 leaks, a quarter mile down the road, a team of FBI agents are stationed outside Rating his, his workspace, ready to conduct a full-scale raid. Mm. We skip, oh, no, we're in going 2011, backwards. Fresh out of college in an NSA internship, Schultz began working for the agency as an engineer in the operations support branch. 
In 2015, he was even made an administrator for the CIA's private developer network known as DevLAN, which gave Dev him the power to control access to the network and therefore access to the tools leaked in Vault 7. Despite mm -hmm. the serious nature of the branch's work, building tools for CIA agents that were literally used in life or death situations, the OSB was run more like a tech startup. A little more laid back than what you're probably picturing. <laughs> they used pop culture references for yeah, we can tell. <laughs> tools like Ricky Bobby, gave each other office nicknames like Dick, Dick Move, Move, and even had full-scale Nerf gun firefights in the office. Schultz, who was described by his co-workers as opinionated and opinionated. a little rough around the edges, seemed to thrive Annoying. in this environment. <laughs> However, things changed sometime in 2015. Oh. A new hire known as Amal decided he wasn't as comfortable with the app. Okay, listen. Nobody's looking at that person as like, yeah, we're getting him in the CIA. Listen. Atmosphere. Amal was a little more professional, didn't seem really? to like Schultz or the Nerf gun firefights, and even nicknamed Schultz Bald Asshole. In October of 2015, <laughs> Mal began complaining to an OSB supervisor <gasps> that Schultz was childish and dangerous. In mm, response, and dangerous. Schultz called him all derogatory. Wait, wait, he called him dangerous? That's kind of... ...dictatory and abusive, saying Amal had told him, I wish you would die in a fiery car crash. I want to piss on your grave. Schultz Damn. noted that words like that do little to foster collaboration. <laughs> no it shit. went in there though. In March of 2016, Schultz filed an official <laughs> formal complaint with CIA officials after Amal reportedly told him, I wish you were dead. That's not a threat. That's a promise. Schultz said he believed. Bro, he does look like someone that would say that. that this was a Let's serious death threat and that he feared for his life. The CIA security official in charge responded to the complaint by saying he couldn't play high school counselor. Yeah? the fuck is wrong with you two? This response made Schultz angry. Hey, come on, you cannot have that. You cannot have a small team that's treating each other like this and and hope they do a good job, brother. He it's felt not... the CIA wasn't taking his death threat seriously enough. So he decided to go higher up the ladder and complain to the director of cyber intelligence. Bonnie's death. After a business meeting, death. Bonnie decides the boys need to be Bonnie's separated. Death. So she orders them both to new desks far away from each other. He okay. then complains about the desk he's moved to separated the children and says Amal has been assigned to a better desk. At this point, Schultz is furious. Okay, now that, that's very childish. Was, Come he's on, clearly not getting it. So instead of trying to work within the agency's guidelines, Schultz goes down to the Virginia State Courthouse and gets a restraining order against his CIA co-worker, Amal. The CIA goes in full damage control and activates something known as the Threat Management the Unit. Threat because management now, unit. this internal issue was being played out in open court, which for not the CIA anymore. is unprecedented. So the CIA decides to move both Schult and Amal to two separate branches altogether. Okay. Schult responds by threatening to go. I mean, that should pretty much take care of everything. Go public, saying he could reach out to the media and have an article written titled "CIA punishes employee for reporting office death threats." Regardless, Schult tries to make the best of his situation, and after relocating down to the eighth floor, Schult tries to continue work on one of the tools he had developed, known as Brutal Kangaroo. Only to find Brutal that his access kangaroo. had been revoked <laughs> due to his branch change. Ooh. Senior officials at the CIA had allowed him to copy the Brutal Kangaroo tool for his own use. Schultz instead took control of the original tool and removed access by all other OSB members. This led to him being stripped of his network administrator access and on November 10th, 2016, he officially resigned from the CIA. But Wait. was this really... I'm surprised they didn't fire this motherfucker earlier. What is going on? This is this sounds so unprofessional. I imagine when I, when somebody says the CIA, I imagine motherfuckers in suits, extremely professional, no peeps, everything's like on point. That's not what I imagine from what I heard. Really what enough the hell? to leak all the CIA tools was a so-called patriot so upset that he would expose some of the most sensitive secrets of his own country. As the agents began to interview Schult, these questions lingered. According to the agents, during the interview, he downplayed the severity of the leak, saying the initial Vault 7 release didn't contain any source codes, so oh, it wasn't God. too severe. Said he couldn't imagine anybody from his former office giving that information to WikiLeaks, mm -hmm. and suggested the agents look for spikes of activity in the network, which would indicate copying of documents. He also informed them that earlier that day, during his lunch break, he went home and printed out travel documents and grabbed his diplomatic CIA-issued passport because he was coincidentally planning to fly down to Mexico with his brother. He was supposed to return mm -hmm. his passport once he resigned Is from that the how agency, it goes? but never did. As the interview wrapped up, the agents presented Schultz with a subpoena and a search warrant. They Ooh. seized his cell phone, and they all head back to Schultz's apartment, a block away, to begin conducting the... Dang, they're working like they got some big-ass nuts. July. 
In the weeks following the raid, the FBI begins examining Schultz's personal devices, which were all now in their possession. While reviewing his desktop computer, FBI agents come across an encrypted mm. directory. The directory is around 54 gigabytes in size. Damn. The directory being Oh, that's a lot. The agents aren't sure what exactly is inside, but they have an idea. And On Schultz's personal cell phone, which is now in their possession, there's a notes app with a bunch of random passwords and, and plain text. God, One of them password. unlocks the container and reveals 50 gigabytes of illegal pornography involving minors. They oh also my God! Okay, lock him up under the prison. Not in the prison, under. Oh, shit. Oh, I just saw what was written there. I mean... And some IRC chat logs discussing the downloading and storing of this material, and find a photograph on Schultz's cell phone of him sexually assaulting a passed out woman. In August, Schultz is woken up by a dozen federal agents Bro, banging on his apartment. What's wrong with you? Arrest him on sex crime charges. They had not yet indicted him on anything related to the Vault 7 releases. When he hears that the government is trying to keep him in custody, he objects and says the crime I am charged with is in fact a non violent, victimless crime. You raped somebody, you stupid degenerate piece of shit, bold motherfucker, ugly Mr. Clean ass looking bitch. As Schultz sits in the Manhattan jail waiting for trial, a block away, FBI agents working out of the Manhattan field office Damn. need to collect Yo, this the seven release for their investigation. This went wild real quick. A problem. The documents leaked are still classified, even though they're publicly available. FBI agents tasked with collecting the WikiLeaks release work? head down to a local Best Buy, purchase a brand new laptop, <laughs> and then go to a Starbucks to use their free public Wi-Fi to download the entirety <laughs> of the classified CIA documents. In May 2018, news finally breaks on Joshua Schultz's arrest, but he's still not indicted on anything related to the Vault 7 release, with the New York Times headlining him as a suspect. Pretty much immediately, online posters, WikiLeaks advocates, and just general skeptics begin picking apart the allegations against them by the FBI regarding Wait. the child abuse. Oh, what, what was that? What was that? What was that? Let's read these. The allegations. And this kid's is why politicians to terrify CIA whenever random and in trying to and send the child magically appears on an electronic device. Oh, well, listen. If it was actually, if he was actually responsible for that, that needs to be taken very seriously. We can't just say shit like this and just oh hope that they put it on his device. What if he actually is a, you know, a P? against them by the FBI regarding the child abuse. How much of a conspiracy was this off of the computer guy that knows how to nuke his hard job protecting himself from stealing and nukes hard job. Listen, this expects that people are always smart. Listen, it doesn't matter how smart you are, you're also a dumbass because you're human. The smartest people can do dumbass mistakes, especially when they think they're so smart that no one will ever catch them, okay? Don't underestimate human stupidity. We have seen that time and like time again. Chappelle bit, just sprinkle some crack on him. It's like, just sprinkle some <laughs> I hate you like I'm young. allegations Ooh. on him. Get the public to hate him from the jump. Drake? So he doesn't turn into some whistleblowing hero. It's a Less compelling tempious. theory. Or at least it would be if Joshua Schultz wasn't also a bit of a fucking idiot. Instead of playing into this obvious theory, many would believe. Schultz's defense for having this material oh, on God, his computer say. was that he ran a server in college that was essentially open to all of his friends. And he simply didn't know what files other users had uploaded on it. So all your friends are pedos. The next month, the government finally showed for the WikiLeaks releases, with 10 new charges ranging from illegal gathering of national defense information mm -hmm. and theft of government property to obstruction of justice and making false statements. Damn, he's going away for a for long ass time. Commencing in early 2020. In the meantime, Schultz had gotten quite used to prison. He had found a way to hotwire the light switch in his cell to act as a cell phone charger, gotten a contraband cell phone, and created social media accounts dedicated Bro! A kitty diddler has that in prison? Come on, brother. To proving his innocence. He sent journalists classified information pretending to be other people. Nice, and even enough. reached out to WikiLeaks to publish 25 pages of his prison ramblings, which consisted of him saying he was going to bring down the justice system, crying about house arrest, and making fun of people who pretended to be Muslim or Jewish in jail to get better food. He what? later converted to Islam. I'm Things seem to, to be me. working out okay for short. <laughs> Until October, what? when 50 FBI agents and a cell phone sniffing dog raid the jail, take his cell phone, and throw his ass in solitary confinement. <laughs> Schultz would later tell a judge he was being tortured in jail, claiming hey. the officials at the jail subject- Good! If you did any of those crimes, I hope you get- Okay, I shouldn't say that on life. ...unusual punishment and wrote, Terrorists receive better treatment in Guantanamo Bay. 
I have seen the footage myself. Schultz would stay in solitary this fucking guy. until his 2020 trial. At the trial, the prosecution provided evidence that after being stripped of his administrative privileges uh -huh. due to the kangaroo incident, Schultz still kept a incident. secret back door to the OSB network. And on April 20th... Yeah, 20 unfortunately, that's not the only back door he'd been looking at. 16, Schultz accessed that back door using the password KINGJOSH3000. While logged in, That's he accessed passwords. one specific backup, the March 3rd, 2016 backup of the OSB tools. Which he then attempted these? to scrub his log files and restore the network. As it turns out, the Vault 7 release on WikiLeaks to this day is a perfect match to that March 3rd backup. Mm. But despite this and some more circumstantial evidence, Schultz was only convicted on two counts, contempt of court and making false statements to the FBI. What? The reason for this seems to be that Schultz's defense attorney did a great job at sowing doubt in the government's case. And also that the technicalities of the entire case were fucking confusing, especially to random jurors who might not even own a computer. So the judge Bruh. declared a mistrial then, with the- Then why are they the random jurors? Why not have people that know what a computer is? God damn it, America. Retrial scheduled for 2022. What the about meantime, the kid stuff? Schultz decided he could defend himself. And the so rape? He fired oh, the God. defense attorney. Listen, bro. I am pretty sure that no one in history that has gone to defend themselves in court has done a good job ever. Ever. Ever since the start of time. I'm pretty sure. He that managed to get him a hung He's jury probably and began spending the next two years learning how to properly defend himself in court. Genius. People go to school for like five plus years here in Bulgaria, become a judge. Not a judge, but uh, you know what I mean. And this guy in two years is going to become a better defense attorney than normal. He was normal. convicted on all charges. Idiot. During his Absolute sentence moron. Here, he allegedly this ran what I mean. Smart people. Absolute idiots sometimes. 29 minutes, calling the jail he was housed in New York's own Auschwitz and Bruh. comparing himself to Nelson Mandela. He was sentenced to 40 years what? in prison. When news about Schultz Damn, first started only 40 years? Media, Patrick Keefe from The New Yorker talked to a couple of his former classmates. And what he found was that Schultz had a history of being incredibly... He would try and touch people or get people to touch him. That was a daily occurrence. I think I see why the other, the other guy said those things about him. And I apologize about making fun of him. He might, he might, he might, he might have known some things. And sexually deviant. Whoa, whoa, oh, your 12 is just, hey, kids, super gross. Makes me want to not be part of school right now. He's touching people when asked not to. And would even go as far as to draw swastikas in Jewish students' yearbooks. Not because he was an actual Nazi or racist, but really just because he liked pissing people off. It's hard to imagine. How does somebody built like that have the balls to do that? What the fuck? The most powerful I mean, intelligence that's agency. What? In history, didn't know about this, yeah, or what knew the about hell? it, and still hired this guy. The CIA may have never even realized that these tools were stolen. If we we did not realize the loss had occurred until a year later. Okay, I, whatever was whatever I thought the CIA was kind of plummeted in my viewpoint. Like them. this guy is kind of suck. Is one of what is wrong with y'all? With a history of problematic behavior to dismantle their entire system. How secure is national security, really? <laughs> Not very secure by the looks of it. God damn. I didn't know the CIA was this dog shit. I mean, they're probably not, but like, stuff like this should not ever happen. Jesus. Anyway, let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, everybody. Have a good day.